Hello everyone, this is Kevin Mange, and this is Kev's TV series, and I'm doing a little something different. I decided to do a talk show, and to my right, I have... Oh, I'm Jonah. Hi Kevin, I'm Jonah. I work with NCAM, but also I'm a fellow Harry Potter fan, and me and Kevin, and sometimes Gabby, who's behind the camera, we gotta give a shout out to Gabby, we, we all talk Harry Potter sometimes, so very excited to be on this talk show with you, Kevin. Thanks. And, to set things, something going on, of why there's a sorting hat right here. Oh. It's because in this room right now, it's blue and green. And if you're wondering why it's blue and green, well, it's something that has to be related to something percentage and personal. So we get that the sorting hat is a bit a little notorious when it comes to sorting its students. It knows best. But I remembered the day when I took the test. Back when I first took it, when I first took the test, I ended up with Ravenclaw House. But also back then, it wouldn't let me get the chance to take the test over and over again. However, now that has happened. When I took the test over and over again, it kept saying Ravenclaw over and over again. But when I came to NCAM, North End of NCAM, I took another different kind of test. It's almost like part of more, but different. I think I might have solved a little something, maybe. I think I clicked the wrong um, choice of a box of what I think, of what I choose, or the box of what I think I would want to choose a box for. I didn't choose Temptation Lies Within. But when I chose Temptation Lies Within, I did end up with Slytherin in the end of that moment. But back then, I didn't choose that box. But it's not about the box. It's about more something that is more in my personal self is the case. So Jonah, what other things do you have to say? Well. I think that the test that you took at North Andover Cam is a better test than the official Pottermore test. The reason being is that the Pottermore test, when you take it, gives you a select questions of a big group. So for example, on the Pottermore test, there might be a big group of 50 questions. But when you took the test the first time, you might have gotten, say, 10 of those 50 questions and those were the ones that you asked to determine your house. But it's not always sometimes the same questions when you take it. So when you retook the test again on Pottermore, you might have gotten 10 different questions or five of the same, five different, but still from that select 50 kind of group. So when you took the test here at North Andover Cam a couple weeks ago, I took you to a website where basically it's a longer test than the Pottermore test but it takes all of those questions. So you're essentially getting asked all those 50 questions. 
instead of just 10 from that big group. And when you take that test, like in Pottermore, it gives you just one house. Like it kept saying you were in Ravenclaw. But when you took it at N North Andover Cam, it gave you percentages, right? So basically what that test is telling you in comparison to Pottermore is saying that every house is a percentage. Like we're all a bit of something. Like I'm a Hufflepuff personally, fellow Hufflepuff people, hi. I'm a Hufflepuff, but like on my test, I think I was 80% or 90, 92% Hufflepuff, but it gave you percentages for all the other houses because we all are a bit of something. Like I think I had like, I think 20% Gryffindor, about like 15% Ravenclaw, and maybe about like 8% Slytherin. And the reason being is that it's saying those are some attributes that you share. So it's saying that when you, because I think you took the test and you got something like 95% Slytherin, which that's basically saying that your attributes as a character, 95% relate to someone in Slytherin. So that's the house you belong into most. So that's why I think that test is better than the Pottermore test, because you're getting asked more questions and also it's giving you more accurate data and also it's basically letting you know that you're not just in one house. You're kind of all the houses, but it's just showing you which house you're more belonging of than just placing you in a house without saying that you are a bit of others. Because think about Hermione Granger, right? Hermione Granger, like she should be in Ravenclaw, don't you think? I don't think she should be in Ravenclaw. So that's the kind of thing. So she has some attributes of Ravenclaw, but she's in Gryffindor. So it's the same thing with that Pottermore test. You're in Slytherin, but you just had some attributes of Ravenclaw, but that's not saying you're in Ravenclaw, you're still a Slytherin. So that's how I look at it. So to me, you're in a Slytherin because you took that more accurate test. You're not in Ravenclaw. So that would be my personal take on it. Right. As you can see, the starting hat is gone. Oh my god, it's a, I don't know what Harry Potter spell it is, but the sorting hat managed to disappear. It, it heard that I roasted it in the way it sorts people, so it decided to leave. Good riddance, we don't need the sorting hat. We have Pottermore websites to give the quiz for us, so we don't need that sorting hat. Silly, silly sorting hat. Okay. Well... To me, I just like to have an imagination on what house I would think I would like to be in of if I were to be in that house. But thank you for laying that out. But in my imagination, I like to think what if I would be in Ravenclaw or what if I would be in Slytherin. And funny thing is, Yes, I take the Pottermore test, but also, I went to Florida. And I was so hoping that when I went to Florida, I were to go there, find out what the Sorting Hat says about me, itself, and see where the Sorting Hat would say about me. Either if I was a Slytherin or a Ravenclaw, but it turns out it didn't. Apparently, it started me to Gryffindor instead. Well, apparently there's no red here. <laughs> I guess not. Gryffindor, I wasn't expecting you to get sorted into Gryffindor. That's an interesting, interesting choice, I think. But continue your story, I'm sorry. Well, the thing is, I remembered I took a video on admitting things and when I admitted to what I had to admit to maybe there's something a bit of Ravenclaw that meets the eye so there's this um, Harry Potter rap that I have is called Harry Potter Fan Club, and it's about don't be disappointed on said house you're in. For me, don't be disappointed in Slytherin. 
don't be disappointed if you're in Ravenclaw. But Gryffindor? Hmm. Allow me to set things straight about all three of them. Well, if I'm in Gryffindor, maybe there's some inner bravery in me that would want to say that maybe I would be brave to face the dark arts. I am a big dark arts fan, no doubt. Yeah. First time you met me, you used all three unforgivable curses on me. Do you remember that? You were walking out the door, you hit me first with the killing curse, then you decided to imperious me, and then just to top it off, you used the cruciatus curse on me. So I can definitely advocate that you're a big fan of the dark arts. Yes. But when it comes to bravery, Maybe, 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 maybe. Hmm. Or maybe. Gryffindor isn't what it is to me. Maybe, according to when I came here for that longer test, instead of the Pardomore test I took in the Harry Potter Fun Club when I had that app, or per se, Pottermore, um, maybe because I like the Dark Guards, maybe there is still Slytherin in me, despite the bravery I might have. So maybe I have not one, not two, but three houses in me. on the context of Ravenclaw, I would want to, per se, admit, from what I said before in my admittance video, um, well, it still is a bit harsh, yes, but, It's what I would still stand by for. I'm sorry, too many women claws out there, but I still stand by. You are complete nerds, dorks, geeks, know it alls. I know that sounds harsh, but I have to admit to it. Apparently, there is a bit of smidge of women claw in me. But I just don't want to be labeled as what you just heard. I just don't think I'm kind of studious as the case. But I just can't help but feel the way that I do feel about myself of being a Ravenclaw. Hesitant. Can't do anything. I wish I would do something. Being independent, it doesn't hurt being independent, but I would like to do things on my own, but I would want to be someone that I'm not. So this is what I have to admit to in Slytherin. Okay, so this is on the personal level. And of what Jonah explained for um, the percentages, he is correct. He is correct. But on a personal level, is what I want the Sorting Hats to understand. On a personal level, I really do think I am a Slytherin. For one, I do want to do something. I want to be heard. I want my voice to project for people to understand that I can be a leader. I can advocate. I can show the initiative to be a leader. Take charge, be in charge. 
stand up for myself, speak up for myself. But maybe there's some sort of ambition there, maybe, but this is still a little bit personal, still. But if I am to be a Slytherin, well, I just want to set aside my emotions, but I want to give a huge shout out to my biggest, best house there is. Hufflepuff. Well, for you. No, oh, not for you though. Ugh, rats. <laughs> I'm sorry, continue, I didn't mean to interrupt. What's your biggest, best house? My biggest, best house is Slytherin. Wow, we just got a cheer from Gabby for Slytherin. I'm all alone over here for Hufflepuff, but that's okay. We all have our opinions. Why, you, why is that your biggest, best house? Well, it's what I admire in Slytherin. Mm. I admire leadership. I admire initiative, advocacy, those who would stand up and speak up those who would be in charge and take charge, but even though they kind of speak down to people, those are kind of people that we want to admire to. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I may not, what you think, to be what Hufflepuff is, but Hufflepuff? is definitely my second favorite house. If worst case comes to shove and if I'm in Ravenclaw, Ravenclaw, nightmare. But the Hufflepuffs and their point of view, Hufflepuff is my second favorite house. I love to hear it. Sorry, Gabby. Uh, yeah, went, 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 ooh. But Hufflepuff is definitely the best of the best. Of course, in your view, Slytherin is the best of the best of the best. But Hufflepuff is the best of the best. Uh, yeah, well, to you. Yes, that is true. I think we just saw no signal sign over here. No signal? That's OK. It'll be fine. I think the Tony Hunter has spoken. The shorting hat has spoken. It is saying no signal, so it's fine. Yeah. We'll let it do whatever, the sorting hat. It's the sorting hat. You can't argue with the sorting hat. Yeah. Notorious, what you gonna do? It knows best, but... If it does throw me to Ravenclaw, then I have to deal with it. So, I may be disappointed, but it's what the Sorting Hat would win over. But think about Neville. He wanted to be in Hufflepuff. But instead, it's turning him to Gryffindor. Um, Care to fill in for that? I, for that, I think Neville, it's the same kind of attribute with Hermione. Like when you look at Hermione, she screams Ravenclaw, right? But she's in Gryffindor. I think it's the same thing with Neville. Neville is the ideal Hufflepuff. Uh, basically, he's shivery, he's quaky, he's a coward, he's like me, we're all the same. But deep down, he has those moments of pure bravery, I think best explained in the first book, where remember he, he gets the house points to win them the cup, or the movie, he gets the five points to beat Slytherin for the house cup because he stood up to his friends. So I think Neville just has that kind of bravery that we don't have of like sticking up for ourselves that we all kind of hope and aspire to have, um, that us Hufflepuffs hope to inspire to have, but we just don't because we're Hufflepuffs. But Neville had that which I think is more of a prominent character trait, which put him in Gryffindor. 
But I think Neville is one of those cases where you would expect him to be in Hufflepuff, but he's in Gryffindor. Yeah. So like what Jonah said, um, Neville may have some traits that he believed he would be in Hufflepuff, but in the end, Brevi wins in the end. But to me, on Hermione, I really do think she should have been a Ravenclaw, but apparently, according to her, Gryffindor is the best to her, but apparently there's some brave moments that I don't see in her. I just understand um, what a smart person like her would do in Ravenclaw when she has all the smarts. But apparently bravery wins in the end against Hermione. Um, whoop de doo But let's just jump to the conclusion of me and Jonah based on what we just said to you all. So let's see where the sorting hat lies if it did sort Jonah, if he were to be sorted into Hufflepuff. Um, I mean, I'd love to be sorted into Hufflepuff. Um, but I don't... Oh, it's a wave now. Oh, pretty cool. Wait, so I'm confused by your question. Are you saying what would I react to if I was sorted into Hufflepuff? Um... My question is, if the Sorting Hat is notorious and would sort you to Hufflepuff, what would the Sorting Hat see within you that would it stand by for what it would say about you in Hufflepuff hats? Mm, so what characteristics would it see about me that puts me in Hufflepuff? I, I'm a very loyal like humble person. I don't seek to eat, like I'm a very, I'm a support person. I like to help other people, not so much of helping myself. And I know a big attribute to Hufflepuff is really helping other people. So that's why I very much uh, relate. And also Hufflepuff is more of like the, like not, I, I don't want to say the normal people, but like they're just the people with like nothing crazy special about them. like. Slytherin like is full of people who want admiration like they're determined like lust for power great things Gryffindor they're very brave they're very like l like very brave they're very outspoken Ravenclaw is very smart very like they have three main things and then Hufflepuff is kind of just the melting pot of just like average kind of just folk which I think are the most important kind of folk. Um, so I very much relate with that, and I think I'm pretty average. Um, so average, I uh, help others more than I like to help myself, and also just Hufflepuff has the stigma of just yellow. I love yellow; it's my favorite color. And also just like Hufflepuff has this vibe, this kind of atmosphere, this mood of kind of a chill, we're just here to like help others have a good time, like enjoy things to the fullest and kind of just take the road as it goes, a very easy flowing road. Like if the road turns left, we're going to go left with the road. We're not going to find our own way. We're not going to go right to go right. We're just going to follow the path. And that's kind of my personality. I'm a very go with the flow, chill kind of person. I think that's Hufflepuff. Maybe that's why this wave showed up. Maybe. It's trying to get me to sway off my path of Hufflepuff, but it won't happen. I'm a, I'm a pretty Hufflepuff, but I think those are the characteristics that a sorting hat would see in me to kind of place me in Hufflepuff. Yeah. Now into my conclusion of me in either Ravenclaw or Slytherin about the sorting hat would say if I was a Ravenclaw or if I was a Slytherin. Okay, so... Apparently, I would want to take a shout out to Ravenclaw for a little bit. Um, I guess it's who I am of what the sorting hat would say about me if I was a Ravenclaw. 
It's true, I do like to be independent and want to do things on my own, but I just want to believe that I, I just want to do something is the case, despite that. I really want to do something and not do something, but I guess I can't help but not do anything, but to wanting to do something is two different ways. If you don't do what you don't do, then you'll never do it. But if you do what you do do, then you will finally get somewhere. But apparently, I think I put out words of wisdom right there. Would you think that? I think so. I agree. I think the amount of steps you don't take are steps lost, and the amount of steps you do take are steps gained. So you should always take those steps. I agree very much with your sentiment. And I don't know if what I said made sense or not, but I think it was echoing the same kind of emotional, inspiring tone that you had, Kevin. But yes, I agree with your sentiment of... Uh, basically, the more things you do, the things gained. Yes. So, in my conclusion of Slytherin, well, in my conclusion of Slytherin, I would say, yeah. Definitely doing something. Definitely want to be a leader. Take the initiative. Takes charge, be in charge. Stand up for myself and speak up for myself. Um, I think I said advocacy, right? You did. I did. Um... So, yeah, that's what I would always admire. Minus the Slytherin speaking down on people. Apparently, that's just my anger, mean and mad part of me that is. But would some people would think that? Um, they wouldn't want to think that, but... It's something that I'm afraid of, but I have to get over it. But I need to stop being so emotional. I just don't like hesitating a lot, is the case. So, would you care to exemplify in my conclusion on Slytherin about me? Well, I think it's very prominent you are Slytherin like I mentioned before on the first day you met me you used all three unforgivable curses on me back to back to back no spaces so I think that characteristic of Slytherin is very prominent the cliche characteristic but for characteristics as in like the subtler stuff because obviously not all Slytherins are evil there's Slytherins who just follow attributes of just like they're very determined take charge like you were saying take leadership charge and take very much kind of like take those steps, take those moments, seize those moments. From the movie Coco, uh, you got to seize your moment. And I think that's kind of what you do a lot is that you, if there is an opportunity, you're going to seize it. Like I think even like this is a perfect example. We had the option last week of making a t like a talk show between you and I and you seized on that moment and you took advantage of it. So I think that is very prominent of your characteristic. So I would agree very much so with what you said about yourself and Slytherin. Okay, so we understand the conclusions between Ravenclaw and Slytherin about me. Okay? Now since we're cleared on that, now to sum up both of the houses together. Jonah, would you sum up both houses of me? Well, like I just was saying, with Ravenclaw and Slytherin, you are, like, you're smart. 
you're very determined. I wouldn't call you a dork. I'm a dork. Um, but I wouldn't call you one. But basically, like I was just saying before, you're very, like, you're seizing your moment, but you're also, like, very characteristic of Ravenclaw. So, like, it's a m subtle mix of both. You have good, good attributes about both houses. And what attributes uh, are those? Well, like I said, with Slytherin, you have you seize your moment very much so, which is something very attributed about Ravenclaw. Your or er, Slytherin, I should say. Sorry, Ravenclaw, very different stuff in thinking wise. Like coming up with show topics to talk about Harry Potter wise. Every day you come in with something new that takes incredible brain power to think of. Like I struggle to think of new ideas all the time. I struggle to think anyway. But basically, as a Ravenclaw, that's something you're good with. And I think those two characteristics specifically are why those two houses are your priorities and your prominence. Yes. And overall, of the Sorting Hat, it may be notorious, like I said before, but I would like to take a poll on if you think I will remain with Slytherin. Yes, I will remain with Slytherin, but I would like to take a poll to sum up the biggest conclusion of all. Am I really a Ravenclaw, or if I'm really a Slytherin? Let me know, and North End of a Cam know, Jonah know, of what the house would say of me, minus out what it did say when I had the sorting hat. So in conclusion, thank you for listening to this talk show. And this is Kevin Manch and Jonah Perlo. Yeah, that's the one. And we are signing off. <laughs>